Hey, Empowered Yoga Teachers, I'm here. I got my back tweaked around a little bit, so I'm doing better. I think we'll do this tutorial for today for this episode of Yin is Your Friend. You know how passionate I am about that being so true to your life because Yin is such a perfect balance to all the active things that you do, um, yoga and otherwise. Today we are looking at shoelace and half shoelace pose. Shoelace will remind you of Gomakasana, Kalpase pose, but again, we use these other terms because we want to get the youngsters of the world, the people who are just go, 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 and only do the fast yoga, to think a little differently about these postures. So I'll show you the seated on the floor version first. And I will start on a bolster, seated on a bolster. And can't tell from here if you can see my feet if I extend them. So I'm going to turn to the side. Okay. So both legs go out. Now the only tricky thing about sitting up on a bolster like this is for some people that will create strain behind the knee. So if that's the case, you can place something under there for support. So starting seated, and I'll just show you with that option. And then one knee comes toward you. So here, this is great because knee is below, knees are below the hips a little bit, um, which really helps with um, tight hamstrings and other things that might be going on with the low back. And then you cross that foot over and then bring the foot toward you so that the knees are moving toward being stacked. And I'm gonna go show you some in-between options here if you know, like already thinking this isn't going to work for me. I'm gonna remove this and use it for something else, but you could do have two blocks. If this knee is very high up, and actually let me show you from this side. So let's say here um, that it doesn't want to, to press down like that. You can wedge a block or a blanket in there so this would be half shoelace, and I'll show you that first, and then we'll do full shoelace. So this is an option. And then from here, you can, you can twist. So that's an option that you can do a series here. So you could twist with this. You could side lean. And if you have prenatal students in your class, then if you're going to have them twist, you could have them twist away from the leg that's on top. So this way, and then also leaning away. And if you were to do a series like this in your class, you could do the side bend to both sides. You could do the twist to both sides. And then you would just have the prenatal student only do um, the, the open twist. So not twisting toward that top leg. And Doing this on the floor, I always like to have something under my hips, even if it's just a blanket, just so the edge of my, um, just so my sit bones can rest off the edge a little. And then the same thing would be true here. Oops, bottom leg out, top leg bent. And again, this can be, you can have the support here, you could use a blanket. Another thing um, to think about is if your students have any kind of reason that they shouldn't be rounding the lumbar. I'm about to show you this forward fold option, but I want to talk about this first. So it could be it could be sciatica, um, especially if it's through the piriformis. It could be a disc issue, but they will know if they're not supposed to round forward. They they usually will know. So one thing you could do is have let them have a strap so that they can stay seated up really tall. They can still have the muscles and the legs be soft like we like to do in yin yoga for the hip. And then they can come forward just a little with a neutral spine. And the way you do that is have them pull the shoulders back and lead with the chest, head, neck, chest, and heart. And then that would be where they would go. For students that it's okay to round the lower back, because when we do that, we get into the urinary bladder, um, um, yes, urinary bladder lines a little more. Um, we're getting into a deeper hip flexion. And this posture is great for knees and hips, if for healthy tissue of knees and hips. So 
external rotation of the hip and knee. Um, you're getting the adduction there because the hip is rotating away. I'm sorry, coming in and um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Oh, and then with the rounding. So chin toward chest, that may be it. Maybe round down a little more. And we're not doing this, we're not leaning back. We're starting from neutral and we're just coming forward. So it may just be here, maybe here, could be here. And the way they are going to know is what is the sensation that they're feeling. When they get to a point where they're feeling sensation, like they can feel something around a joint group or maybe even a, um, sometimes it starts with the tensing of muscle, then they're just gonna hang out there for a while. So they're gonna get where they feel something, they're going to get still and stay for a little while. I'm gonna turn back to the front and show you the option for full. Hi, Audrey. Every time I start talking to the camera, she comes in here and otherwise she pretty much ignores me or stays right by my side, but doesn't get active. So uh, you would take one leg and bring that foot toward the hip, the opposite hip, and then the other one comes over and stacks. And you may have this going on and that's okay. We just support it there. So we try to, when joints are floating in yin yoga, we, we try to bridge that gap in a way that still lets the sensation be felt but not um, let gravity really be pulling hard on that joint. So if the knee was up like that, we could do this. And then if rounding was okay, you could be here. This posture is in the family of everything that you, everything related to kind of, you could think about in regular yoga pigeon. So many different things you could do here if you know that the student crossing the leg like that is not gonna feel good. So even just here, just a regular figure four could work. You're still getting into the, um, you're still getting into the hip joint. So with shoelace, we are stimulating typically the liver and kidney meridians and then with the forward folding, uh, we can add a little bit of um, urinary bladder. And then if we do, if we are leaning to the side, we're getting some gallbladder action. And if we're adding arms, and uh, arms overhead and arms and chest and shoulders, then we can get a little bit into heart and lung meridians. So all of these things, so of course you could do both sides, you could do that lying down, and I know we've gone through these with swan and sleep, sleeping swan. So you could do that here or here. All of those options are available. So let's look at a couple that you could do in a chair, because I know a lot of you teach seniors. And I like to have a strap handy. So sitting, then you could start here. And a lot of times this is a progression I will do with my seniors. I will see how they are here. No, actually, let me, let me take that back. I try, I start with just a cross leg and I see how they are. And I kind of watch and then if this looks okay, then I'll transition it and say, make it where there's like a triangle here, okay? So these are variations on, on what, we do, what we're doing on the floor. Um, if stacking is okay, then you might say, reach for that foot. And you can see that this is very similar to the one leg option on the floor. I wouldn't normally do two leg. Now, if I have enough chairs that everybody can have two chairs, then this other leg that, can, that foot could go up on the chair and that feels so good. If you do the two chairs, just make sure that extended leg, that the knee isn't hyperextended to the point that they feel any kind of strain there. And then the, really that's the inquiry. Like you can look and you can kind of think, I, I don't want you to look and go, oh, hyperextension, freak out. Cause this is a little bit different. Well, it's actually a lot different approach to that. So you want to ask them if they're strained. Now most seniors, most of my seniors, um, they can have both legs out on that chair and straight and sit up tall and it's fine. Sometimes you'll find that it's a little too tight and you'll, you'll see them leaning back and I might give them a different option if that were the case. But again, you could have just the leg crossed and then you could take the strap around the foot, 
around the ball of the foot. Now, almost always my seniors have their shoes on. So, um, because many of them have neuropathy kind of issues and they just don't want to be, they just don't want to have their shoes off. So it's easy to keep their feet safe because you just put it anywhere on the foot. But if, if they are barefooted, then around the ball. And then you can just be here, shoulders down, and or you could have hands on that strap and then be holding the other leg up. And you see we're getting a very similar thing. We're not rounding forward, but that's okay. If the ability is there or the want or need for sensation there, you could still round forward here. This would work best though if there was an extra chair. If that foot's down, not on a chair, and not in the strap, you can still hold on. You could still, even with a neutral spine, lean forward. But if rounding is okay, you could round from here. I want to turn to the side and show you that as well, so that you can really see. Um, we'll do this leg. So I've got my hand on that. I've got my hand here. Here, I'm just coming forward keeping the spine neutral. It's like a lever, okay, for disc issues, sciatica, and otherwise rounding forward. But see how I'm not doing this? I'm just rounding. It's like my lower back is staying exactly where it was, and then I'm finding some option here. But remembering, this gets a similar sensation in the hip, and so does the rounding there. So you have to decide what works best for them. I love these chair options. So again, we've got hip external rotation. We've got adduction because we're bringing the hip toward the, or the thigh toward that thigh. It's a little bit tr of a tricky one because normally we think of external rotation as being abduction, going away. But here we are externally rotating, but then we're adducting that leg so and that just means bringing it in closer bringing things together adding to it you can think about it like that if you're not familiar with these terms abducting is like taking away adduction is bringing it close and then you're getting the i think i already said the flexion of the hip and that happens here or here so this is a good back stretch as well I think I covered everything. I hope that's good. Again, you can do these on the floor. You could do figure four at the wall. Um, you could do all of this lying down. I have one more option that I'll show you that I forgot about lying down, and this feels good, especially if you have someone who um, doesn't want to do this seated for whatever reason. You can do both legs. So you just cross the legs, like, you, like we did seated in the chair, and then you bring all of that toward you. Now, you could put blocks under the feet so that someone could stay here, especially if rounding in the back was um, contraindicated, or if you uh, wanted to, you could just have, so I have some students who want more, and the way they get more is by doing this on their back, so it really just depends. I'm gonna switch legs, switch sides, and then I can just take a hold of the feet. Now, if you bring the feet up, uh, way more and then pull them down for me that gets a lot more in the hips so you can really just have your students play with that you want to ask them questions what are you feeling where are you feeling it and really if you're not doing this with your again yoga students you're kind of missing the point because we're trying to set things up for them in the most beneficial way for their skeletal structure so Paul really has a lot of great stuff on this on his functional yin yoga approach where he talks about the 14 segments the 14 skeletal the 14 segments of the body 10 skeletal structures in the um, I'm sorry 24 10 skeletal and 14 skeletal and 10 muscular it's really really good I do cover some of that in the yin yoga training so if that's something you're interested in come and join me this weekend in Little Rock for the 15 hour yin yoga training that's what I have for you today. Thanks for being patient and waiting for this to come in the afternoon. And I just posted a 48 minute easy evening yin yoga class. If you're wanting something for tonight to wind down your day, give it a try. I'd love to hear from you in the comments and or shoot me a DM. Have a great one.